I gotta shave. These are the days. So we got tip three. I'm still on my New Year's resolution. If I can lose uh, three pounds, that would be great too. So welcome everybody to this week's installment of my tips and tricks and shop tour. What's going on? So uh, it's been an exciting week and I'm just going to jump right into it. Let's uh, sort of scroll over here. Hold on. I got to turn the camera. So what have I been working on? I'm continuing to work on these custom pulls. These are kind of cool. So I see and see these babies out. And this is for that bedroom set I'm working on. And these will be uh, inlaid with uh, some Pomely Sapili veneer. So I, um, I'm playing with how to do this. I got a laser. The laser is not working really well. So I ended up uh, seeing seeing these out. I think that will work really well. These get stained real dark first. Half of them get veneer and the other half get actually shagreen, which is a stingray sort of leather. This is finding itself even more of a pain in the ass uh, to inlay, but um, I think the idea is to glue them down and, um, and then see and see them out. And for what it's worth, I'm actually on the, on the veneer, I'm backing my veneer on a backer board. This is phenolic, this is a phenolic paper. And that's what sort of uh, Formica is, is um, laid up on, much thicker though. This will make this veneer much more stable. Then I can glue that down, CNC it out, and we should be, we should be pretty good. So we're looking forward to how that go that's going. Other things that we're working on is I'm evaluating some head visors. So if you guys do any fine work, I don't know how about you, but my eyes are, are going. Let's get this out of the hairway. So I've been evaluating these, these visors. Well, I don't know if you've seen these or not. Kind of like this. This is the first one I started with. The reason I like this is um, one, we got two lenses, so I can sort of do uh, medium and then extra fine. The head lock is sort of good, but it doesn't lock. So that sort of slips and it's sort of soft. So that's that's the first one I looked at. The latest version I'm playing with, well, I actually think this is the winner here. Uh, it has a cushioned, uh, cushioned head, uh, forehead and back and the dial uh, pushes and pulls so I can pull it, turn it, and then push it in and it locks so it'll stay in position. So I pull, make my adjustment, turn it, and um, again it goes up and down. I've got uh, two levels. In addition, I've got this extra one. So if I am really want to see something super, super fine, you know, get a splinter out, uh, that's kind of a nice little feature. And this one also has a light on it, which I don't have batteries in. I rarely, rarely use the lights but the lights tip down. Uh, and that's kind of good, although I've seen on Facebook these little sort of these versions here, which I thought were kind of weird uh, at first. They are kind of light, but I'm a little worried about, you know, working down. Uh, and I was almost gonna go for this one. This is kind of good. The one I do like about this is rechargeable. You just plug this into a USB and the light uh, does charge and it does tilt down and all that. But quite frankly, I don't really use the light. The problem with these are, and this is what you want to be careful is, is this particular, these lenses um, don't focus as well as the other. I don't know what's going on. Is it me or, or whatnot? Now, obviously, this one works well. But uh, there's a couple lenses in here that just seem off. I don't know why, but I can't seem to, the lower ones, the one and one and a half. So... Um, just beware of that. I mean, I, I don't know if these are going to break the bank or not, but uh, this is the uh, 1X. And when I put that on, I, for the life of me, cannot find a focal. Well, I guess it's right there, but it seems like I'm seeing double. So, you know, obviously these are cheap and they um, are just cast. They're not polished or ground. But So I think the lens was, was not quite right on that and I don't know the 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 you know the arms sort of pressed into your temples a bit so I think I'm kind of going with this one this is my recommendation uh, and of course I don't have a brand name I actually got this uh, in China and I'm probably gonna bring a case of them in so if you are interested we're gonna, I'm gonna buy a case of them just for my students so uh, check at imagine woodworking I don't know when we'll have that up. It's going to be months from now, but I'll let you, I'll might let everybody know on that. So the visor, that's kind of good. What else is going on? So 
I'm finally finishing this uh, commission for the University of Rochester. And that's this baby here. It's just the birdhouse of Rushery's library. Uh, sort of a, a gift, hopefully he's not watching. And then we're doing a monastery right now. So these are copper finials and we're consolidating these. And um, some of them we're gonna be making molds of and make new ones of that, so that'll be really fun. These three that I have here are, were in pretty good shape, but we just consolidated them by putting a fiber-filled epoxy inside from Smooth-On and sort of doing a rotational uh, mold. And that sort of holds and grabs everything together. And then that will go on top of the other larger one. So uh, that's been a fun project. Watch for that. Um, oh, and what you hear in the background is my... Let me get over here because I can't see what you're seeing here. So we're going to switch this around this way and do that. So I, I just filmed a, another video. This should be a pretty good one. For those of you who know, my specialty is veneer and compound veneering is what I really do. So I just filmed a whole video on how to condition veneer. So veneer can either be wrinkly and or brittle or both. And uh, to do compound veneering, you need to plasticize it. So this is a poor example, but this is um, a stool uh, bench. So this has been a compound veneer. So this is veneer top and wrapped around. We certainly seen the side, but this curve here is is a compound curve and veneer has to stretch and compress to make that kind of curve i um i've done bowling balls and i did a, a full nude and some of my students have done faces and greg zaneda has done a hand so uh, we'll be teaching that uh, down the road but i just conditioned some veneer for in two weeks i'm filming how to do a radial match in veneer so that's sort of a starburst uh so with some really nice um walnut veneer with with sapwood and uh so look for that you can check that course out at imagine grove uh but i want it to be nice and supple and easy to work with so that's what's going on over there oh and i never got to my shop tip so this is a shop tip so what is my shop tip today so my shop tip today is going to be access the pencils i don't know about you but i always seem to lose my pencils so i screw uh, coffee cans everywhere and have pre-sharpened pencils and I usually put a knife in there everywhere I've got them all over the place and that just makes life a lot easier so if you don't have a pencil uh, you know I in this particular one I have uh, my Plexo uh, acrylic cleaner and pencils and even safety glasses for my lathe turning area but that's just a great a great tip you will um, <clears throat> Won't regret it. I mean, you should have an apron on all the time with pencils, but I still seem to lose pencils. There's another one over here. And that's my vacuum bag going off. So there's another one there. And that just makes life a lot easier. There's nothing worse than, than having a, um, boy, having a, a pencil that you, you're working on a project and having a pencil not, not be available or you need a utility knife or what have you. So this is the, let's go down here. There's my vacuum bag and we are, uh, pressing veneer, we're conditioning it. So that's what I just did that. So look for that veneer. Here's some of the laser tests that we did, trying to cut those babies out. Uh, figuring out the settings on a laser is real, real tough. Oh, and the last one, I don't know if Gary will mind if I tell you this. So if you know Gary Knox Bennett, he's a world-renowned artist, great friend out in Oakland, California, and we're kind of doing a commission together, I guess, or I'm helping him out on a casting job. So. This is for one of his friends, and we're doing a large mass casting here. And let's see if you can look in there. So that's what that's about. Watch for that. That's a, a surprise, so I can't really say much about that. I don't know if anybody's chatting or not here. Live chat. All messages are visible. I don't think anybody's on. So, oh, hey. Reconnecting. Hey, Scott from Mittenboro. All right. Thank you. Love the work you do. I appreciate that. How's the weather over there? You guys I hear are, are worse than New York as far as the corona thing goes. That's crazy. Sorry about that. But we'll get through it as long as everybody just wears their mask. I think if we wear a mask for like two months. Hopefully we can get through this. But it is not so. I uh, hope everything's all well. Very wet and cold. Lots of snow. Hey, you got snow. Good. It's been snowing today too. Let's show you outside here. So we just got some snow last night. There's looking outside. 
And, uh, yeah, stay in the house, man. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's an important thing to do. And I think we're lucky, you know, as artists and craftspeople, I'm, I'm happy to stay inside and, and just work, not go out, you know, bring it on. Keep that, keep that lockdown going. Uh, and then we're still working on these. Um, these are the drawer fronts for that bedroom set. Nice little bead there. And these will be uh, veneered with inset panels with the chagrin leather from the Stingrays and the Pomelisa Peely. So uh, I think this one's kind of short and sweet. Only 10 minutes, that's good. 